friends, it's time for story. So the story that I picked today is called Fish is Fish, and the author is Leo Leone. I think that you guys will really enjoy this book. It's about a friendship between two animals. But before we read our book, let's get our bodies ready. Everybody get your hands up. We'll sing, open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Place them on your lap, lap, lap. Nice job, boys and girls. Everybody is looking ready. Fish is Fish by Leo Leone. Oh, has the story started yet? Nope. It is the title page. And look it, it's also a full spread. The pictures go straight across both of the pages. Ah, now the story has started. At the edge of the woods, there was a pond. <clears throat> and there was a minnow. A minnow is a little fish and a tadpole. They swam along the weeds. They were inseparable friends. Inseparable means they were always together. They did not separate. They stayed together. <clears throat> One morning, the tadpole discovered that during the night, he had grown two little legs. <gasps> he has two legs, his front legs. Look, he said triumphantly, look, I am a frog. <gasps> Nonsense, said the little minnow. How could you be a frog if only last night you were a little fish just like me? Ugh, they argued and argued until finally the tadpole said, Frogs are frogs and fish is fish and that's that. In the weeks that followed, the tadpole grew tiny front legs and his tail got smaller and smaller. Oh, what else did he grow back here? Oh, some big, strong back legs, too. And then, one day, a real frog now, he climbed out of the water and onto the grassy bank. He's climbing out of the water, and he's going to go up onto the grassy bank. How do you think that's going to make the fish feel, because they were really good friends. Let's find out. The minnow too had grown and had become a full-fledged fish. He, offered, he often wondered where his four-footed friend had gone, but the days and weeks went by and the frog did not return. Then, one day, with a happy splash that shook the weeds, the frog jumped into the pond. Where have you been? asked the fish excitedly. I have been about the world, hopping here and there, said the frog, and I have seen, seen extraordinary things. He has seen some pretty wonderful things. Like what? asked the fish. Birds, said the frog. Birds? And he told the fish all about the birds who had wings and two legs and many other colors. As the frog talked, his friend saw the birds fly through his mind like large feathered fish. <gasps> what else? asked the fish impatiently. Cows, cows, said the frog. Cows! They have four legs, horns, eat grass, and carry pink bags of milk. So right here, the fish has his thought bubble. You see the thought bubble coming out of his head? And he's imagining, he's trying to make a picture of what a cow looks like. And this is what the fish thinks the cow would look like. He's picturing like a big fish with horns and eating some grass and four legs, and pink bags of milk, the udders. <laughs> Uh-oh, my page is a little stuck. Oh boy. 
And people, said the frog. Men, women, children. And he talked and talked until it was dark in the pond. But the pictures, the picture in the fish's mind was full of lights and colors and marvelous things. And he couldn't sleep. If only he could jump about like his friend and see the wonderful world. So the fish wanted to see all the things that the frog had seen. He's thinking and thinking about it. What do you think the fish might do? Let's find out. <gasps> Here's some of the marvelous things that the fish was, was thinking about. Right? He was thinking about birds. That's what he thought the birds looked like. He's thinking about men, women, and children. That's what he thinks they look like. And some cows, right? And then they're walking in the grass and in the flowers. I think I see some butterflies. <clears throat> and so the days went by. The frog had gone and the fish just lay there dreaming about birds in flight, grazing cows, and those strange animals all dressed up. That his friend liked to call people. One day, he finally decided that come what may, he too must see them. And so with a mighty whack of his tail, <clears throat> he jumped clear out of the water and onto the bank. He jumped onto the bank. The fish came out of the water. <gasps> what might happen? Oh my goodness. Let's find out. Let's find out. He landed in the dry, warm grass and he lay there gasping for air, unable to breathe or move. Help, help, he groaned feebly. Fish can't breathe air. Yeah, fish have gills. Fish are supposed to stay in the water. So when he came out, he could not breathe. Now he needed help. Do you think someone might come and help the fish? Oh, I hope so. Let's find out. Nope, another tricky page. Luckily, the frog who had been hunting butterflies nearby saw him. And with all of his strength, he pushed him back in the pond. Still stunned, the fish floated about for an instant. Then he breathed deeply, letting the cool, clean water run through his gills. Now he felt weightless again, and with an ever so slight motion of the tail, he could move to, to, to and fro, up and down as before. The sun rays reached down within the weeds and gently shifted patches of luminous color. This world was surely the most beautiful of all worlds. He smiled at his friend the frog who sat watching him from a lily leaf. You were right, he said. Fish is fish. So the fish seems much happier in the water now, right? Yeah. And the frog was sitting up here on his lily pad looking down. So the friends could still visit with each other, even though they weren't living in the same place, right? Yeah. And that's really nice. All right, friends. That is the end of our story for today. And it's time to say goodbye. So I want everyone to get their goodbye hands ready. Hands up. And we'll sing... Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Bye, boys and girls.